Greetings, and thank you for taking the time to view our webinar. Today, we will provide a brief presentation that describes the capabilities of the TWIST methylation detection system, an end-to-end -end solution for library preparation, conversion, and target enrichment of genomic samples to identify regions of methylation. In order to help scientists and researchers advance important fields of research, such as development, neurobiology, and oncology, TWIST has worked tirelessly to develop an advanced end-to-end -end targeted methylation sequencing workflow. The system is a step forward in targeted methyl seq, providing a best-in-class sequencing in uniformity and sensitivity. We accomplish this performance through three key advances. One, state-of-the-art enzymatic conversion that replaces classic bisulfide approaches. Two, advanced probe design techniques to enable efficient post-conversion capture. And three, optimize fast hybridization conditions that ensure uniformity and saves days in sample to sequencer processing. TWIST and New England Biolabs have partnered to produce an end-to-end -end workflow that includes ligation-based library preparation and enzymatic conversion reagents in the NEB Next EMSeq for TWIST targeted sequencing kit. The library preparation and conversion have been specially optimized for use with downstream target enrichment. This is coupled with a modified fast hybridization workflow that includes a key methylation enhancer component to ensure maximum on target for efficient sequencing. TWIST has optimized an advanced design algorithm to deliver the final piece of the workflow, the custom methylation panels. Over the next few minutes, we will describe how these three key components come together in an optimized workflow to deliver best-in-class solution for targeted methylation sequencing to better understand the underpinnings of cancer and other diseases. With that overview, I'd like to introduce Chaitanya Ponaluri from New England Biolabs, who will introduce you to the key features and performance of the NEB Next EMSeq for TWIST targeted methylation sequencing kit. Thank you, Luke, for the kind introduction. Uh, I'm excited to be part of this webinar series. Uh, I'm going to discuss uh, the workflow and advantages with respect to the NEB Next enzymatic methyl seq, which is part of the, uh, the, the TWIST uh, workflow for target capture. Uh, so traditionally, bisulfide sequencing or whole genome bisulfide sequencing has been the gold standard for looking at 5-methyl-C and 5-hydroxy-methyl-C detection. So on the left here, you have the traditional workflow wherein you use uh, sodium bisulfide to do uh, to convert uh, unmethylated cytosines to uracil, and then hydroxy and the uh, methyl cytosines remain unconverted as cytosines. And after amplification and sequencing, you retain the modified state as cytosines and the unmodified state, which are converted to uracils, are read as tiny. <clears throat> the pros for this method have been, the, it's pretty accurate. It's at single base resolution, it is the gold standard for studying DNA methylation. However, uh, because of the harsh uh, chemical nature and the treatment that is done, uh, there's DNA strand breakage, DNA depermodization, incomplete desulfonation. Uh, we can also see incomplete conversion or overconversion. Uh, we at uh, NEB uh, have worked uh, many years to develop a new method called enzymatic methyl seq, wherein we take advantage of two uh, enzymatic steps for uh, achieving the same goal of detecting methylated and hydroxymethylated cytosines. So the, there are two steps. The first step is the oxidation and, uh, and protection of the uh, hydroxymethyl and the methyl cytosine uh, residues. And the second step involves a deamination of the unmethylated cytosines to uracil. So the two steps are essential because EPOBAC has uh, deamination activity on the hydroxy and the methyl cytosines as well. So with the first step, which is the oxidation and the glucosylation of the HMC and the methyl C, uh, once this is done, EPOBAC enzyme cannot work on these uh, residues for any uh, subsequent deamination. So uh, once uh, two steps are, of the enzymatic reactions are complete, and the amplification is done, you end up with a similar sequence as, as you get for the bisulfide sequencing, and the throughput is, uh, the readout is exactly the same. However, the quality of the readout is much better. Uh, so the overall workflow, so you start with the uh, library preparation. So you uh, the kit currently works from 10 to 200 nanograms of input and can be sheared to an average size of 300 base pair. Uh, and once the shearing is done, you do end repair and detailing. Uh, followed by the ligation of uh, EMC specific adapters. Uh, once the ligation is complete, so we perform the conversion steps, which is the two-step oxidation and deamination reactions. 
and then finally Amplify and Sequence. So this is the standard EMC workflow. However, for the twist uh, component to be included, once the amplification is done, the material can be utilized for uh, fast capture and then uh, 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 using the custom panel developed by twist. So I'm going to share a, a very small snippet of the data from uh, uh, the comparison study that we did between EMC and WGBS. So this is, uh, we have used 10, 50, and 200 nanograms of na 128780 DNA, uh, which is spiked in with controls, the CPG methylated puck and methylated lambda. Uh, these libraries were sequenced on NovaSeq uh, 6000. Uh, we had around 324 million pair reads for all the libraries. Uh, reads were aligned to HG38 using uh, BWM meth. And then uh, we did some correlation analysis and standard insert size and GC bias metrics. Uh, so you can find all the data at the technical note uh, on the uh, provided in the link here. Uh, looking at the basic metrics, uh, library yield is something that is very important to begin with. So you can see here, uh, in green is EMC and beige is bisulfide sequencing. So we are able to achieve higher yield with two cycles less for each input amount that we tested. Uh, this directly translates to library duplication rates. So you can, uh, for EMC, the duplication is anywhere between 15 to 10%, uh, whereas for bisulfide sequencing, it, uh, it is very high for the 10 nanogram input, and it drops down with as you increase the amount of input going in. So this boards well for EMC because since you are not damaging the DNA, uh, you are able to retain more material that can be uh, amplified and you can you need less cycles to do the amplification so you're not uh, you have you're retaining the complexity associated with the sample so the, uh, next the global methylation metrics that you obtain uh, using both emc and bisulfide sequencing are fairly similar uh, uh, this is the methylation profile for the human uh, na12878 genomic dna so we see very consistent methylation in the cpg uh, context and very low uh, methylation profiles for CHG, CHH context as we expect for the human genome. Uh, the main advantages when you, uh, the, between, uh, for EMC when compared to bisulfide sequencing is the evenness of the genomic DNA uh, genome coverage. So here I'm showing you a, a GC bias profile, wherein you see for EMC in green, it's fairly flat uh, between 15, 20% to uh, 70 to 80% of the GC content. And uh, with respect to the bisulfide uh, data, you see very high over en uh, enrichment to the uh, AT rich region and then depletion in the high GC rich region. So which is not good uh, for uh, any target capture uh, that you want to do downstream because you are already biasing the material going into the capture. Uh, one more aspect that we can look at is the number of CPGs that are being identified. So I'm representing the, the data in two forms here. On the left is a cumulative plot where you can see how many CPG sites are covered at what uh, coverage depth. So EMC, uh, if you look at 1x coverage, you are uh, covering around 55 million CPG sites, wherein you're counting both top and bottom strands together. Whereas best case for bisulfide sequencing is around 45 million. And for 10 nanogram, it drops down to around 35 million sites. And then it very quickly drops off as you increase the coverage depth. Uh, uh, this can be better represented in the Venn diagram on the right. So on the top, you have the 1x minimum, which is represented from here. So you can see at each input level, EMC covers more CPG sites. Uh, whereas for the 8x minimum, the, the number of sites that are covered is uh, still more substantially higher for EMC compared to bisulfide sequencing. Uh, so this gives you a big advantage with respect to uh, what targets are available for capture and uh, how you can best utilize the system downstream. Uh, so just to conclude this part of the talk, so uh, EMC is superior in identification of the CPGs when compared to uh, whole genome bisulfide sequencing. You get higher yield with less PCR cycles and low duplication rates. Uh, you get consistent global methylation levels, uh, more even GC coverage, uh, detects more CPGs with less reads, uh, so, and there is much more information available on the tech note uh, as, as well. Uh, so I'll hand it over to Luke now to take us through the twist capture uh, workflow and more uh, data associated with it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ponaluri. From here, I'll take the next few minutes to describe the rest of the targeted methylation sequencing workflow. Target enrichment can proceed by pre or post capture conversion. Post-capture conversion targets the original sample DNA, while pre-capture conversion targets the four strands of converted sequences. 
While post-capture conversion presents fewer challenges for probe design, it often requires large quantities of starting DNA material as PCR amplification does not preserve methylation patterns and cannot be performed before capture. Therefore, pre-capture conversion is often the method of choice for low-input sensitive applications such as cell-free DNA. The second piece of the system that ensures outstanding performance is the twist custom panel design. As mentioned, methylation sequencing involves conversion of unmethylated cytosines to uracils while leaving methylated cytosines intact. By performing the enzymatic conversion prior to capture, a variety of different species are generated and fed into the target capture. Twist has implemented an advanced algorithm to ensure that there is capture of all the species present. This includes sense and antisense, as well as methylated and unmethylated sequences. Through extensive research and machine learning, the design is adapted to the custom regions of the genome and can be fine-tuned for stringency to meet the needs of a particular experiment. Scientists at Twist have used empirical and theoretical approaches with machine learning to develop advanced algorithms for optimized panel designs. Using the adaptive algorithm for panel design, improvements have been made across a broad range of metrics for optimal sequencing efficiency. The third key advance within the workflow is the hybridization. The twist fast hybridization workflow has been specifically optimized to ensure consistent performance with an efficient workflow. With a hybridization time of less than four hours, this can save days from typical targeted sequencing methylseq workflows. Further, the use of methylation enhancer reagent helps to ensure maximized on-target rates, resulting in more efficient sequencing that can lead to better data quality and cost savings. The optimized hybridization conditions lead to efficient capture across a broad range of panel sizes. Here we see performance metrics for three designs, ranging from 500 kilobases to 50 megabases in size. The performance across this broad range is outstanding with high on-target rates, even coverage, as demonstrated by low full AD base penalty values, good depth of sequencing, and efficient use of data as shown by the low duplication rates. The improvement in sequencing compared to bisulfide approaches is highlighted by global examination of GC representation and targeted sequencing data. Across targeted regions, the enzymatic method in the EMC kit shows more even coverage with a significant improvement in representation in regions of high GC content, which is particularly relevant for studying methylation that is most frequently occurring in the context of C followed by a G in the genome. These CPG motifs are densely packed in regulatory regions of the genome that drive gene expression, precisely the regions of interest to researchers. Here we see the results from the advanced design algorithm. In these experiments, samples with different levels of methylation were converted, enriched, and sequenced using the workflow described. The data demonstrates the consistency of the hybridization conditions to detect content in the range of 5% to 100% methylation. Furthermore, the differentially methylated regions, or DMRs, are detected consistently across a range of 25% to 100% methylation, indicating efficient capture of a broad range of methylated species in the samples. The use of cell-free DNA, often derived from plasma samples, offers a unique and less invasive way to assay a patient's DNA for cancer markers. One important marker that is emerging is patterns of methylation in the human genome that can be used to track onset, progress, and regression of cancer. The quantity of cell-free DNA is often quite low, and this can pose significant challenges in detecting changes in methylation patterns in DNA from normal cells compared to that of cancerous cells. In a comparison of cancer samples to normal samples, key DMR regions of interest were clearly identified. It is these regions that are most critical for connecting the methylation patterns observed in targeted methylseq data to the progress of a disease. Differentially methylated regions are an attractive biomarker for detection because of the numerous sites that can be detected. This contrasts with a single point mutation in standard approaches that can be much more difficult to measure consistently. 
The TWIST methylation detection workflow is the most advanced set of technologies to enable methylation research in a wide range of applications, leveraging state-of-the-art enzymatic conversion, advanced probe design algorithms, and a fully optimized hybridization workflow. These all contribute to the best data in the most cost-effective way and can be adapted to a broad range of different target sizes and genomic regions. With that, I'll thank you for the opportunity to discuss the targeted methylation sequencing system.